All right, Jess, it's time to enjoy the sweet part of our show. It's high time. Mm -hmm. Baker Morgan Botwinick is back with us today. She's ready to feature her signature vanilla eclairs. Morgan, these look delicious. Welcome back. It's Thank nice to see you. You, you too. You've already done the hard part, and that's the baking <laughs> part, right? Yes, yes, yeah. that's true. I brought some with me so you can see the finished product. Um, but I'm going to take you through how to make the dough today, which is really the the base of all this delicious um, bakery product here. Um, and so it's what this dough is. It's called pat a shoe. It's oh, really what? A pat a shoe. Pat a shoe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, <laughs> it's one of the foundational doughs in French baking, um, along with pat brise, which is like a, a pie dough or a tart dough, um, and pat fouette, which is like puff pastry dough. Um, pat a shoe is, is really a foundational dough. Um, mm -hmm. You can do a lot with it. Um, and it's very unique in that it is baked twice, um, or rather cooked twice. So the first way we cook it is here on the stovetop. So what I have here in this little saucepan is a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, water, and butter. Okay. And so I'm heating this together, and um, ideally what we want to see here is the butter melting and the water coming up to a boil. With it being baked twice and knowing that a really good eclair is so light and yes. fluffy, you, you must have to tread so lightly to make sure that happens. Well, it is, it's all about the balance, really. Um, eclairs get their, their light and fluffiness from the egg, really, that we're going to add later. Um, and when you add the egg, you'll see I'll add some of it, and then I'll check the dough, and then it might need a little more, it might need a little less. So in that way, it does require a little bit more finesse um, than like maybe a cake batter or cookie dough. So um, what you got going there now, you're just melting the butter with the water. With water and a little bit of sugar and, and sugar. salt. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty simple right there. Yes, exactly. I could do that. Exactly. Bill feels like he's exactly. got this part. <laughs> yes. All right, I'm and, with you. And what's nice, what's so versatile about this dough is you, so we're going to cook it here on the stovetop, and then for eclairs, you cook it again in the oven. However, um, pate choux dough is, is really, you can really do a few different things with it. You can fry it. Um, sort of make like a churro or funnel cake. Um, you can actually also boil it, and the texture is that of sort of like a gnocchi, so it's like light and pillowy. Um, and so it can be used in both sweet and savory uh, applications. So when, I'm sorry, when you make your dough, uh, you, do you do a bunch of it and put one, one group of it in one place and say, I'm going to do this with that and this with the other, or do you just make it for the one purpose you're doing that day? Typically, you want to just make it for the one purpose. Yeah. Um, if we were making a savory version of this, I would add some cheese to the dough while it's, while it's mixing. Um, but if you want to use it in a sweet application, I'm just going to kind of leave it as is. Um, okay, so this is now melted together and Yum. is heated. So I'm going to add in some flour, and this is just all-purpose flour. Some recipes will call for bread flour, um, mm. but you can you can really use either. And bread flour has a higher protein content, oh. so that gluten word that's always you know around. Um, that's that's the protein in in flour. Science in the kitchen. Yes. All right. So. What is chemically this going to do? Have, put the flour and thicken it, right? Exactly. So what we're going to make here now is like a paste. Um, and so what we're doing is we're cooking out a little bit of the moisture. It's almost like a big old batch of roux. Yes, yes. Very, very similar. So what this does is it cooks out a little bit of the moisture and it also starts to cook the flour. Yeah, it sure does. Looks Look at like that. mashed potatoes already. Yes. Thickening yeah. up. Yeah. And I love how this smells. To me, it smells like a little bit cheesy somehow. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's the butter. Um, but I, I love how it smells. It You've got to keep working delicious. that though, don't you? Because yes. that's coming together really quickly. Yeah. So now I've got a paste here and I want to continue to cook it for a, about a minute or two until a, a small film forms on the bottom of the pan, and that's usually a sign that it's ready to go. I'm like enthralled. I've never seen this done. This is really cool. It's, it's really, it, and it's, it's honestly, it's not that complicated. Like right now, I think it's like using four or five ingredients. It does smell um, cheesy. I can right? smell it now. And so there's a little bit of a film um, on the bottom of the pan there. I used to get a film on the bottom of the pans when I cook, but it's not a good thing. <laughs> and of course, be, and, and that is something that you want to do, continue to, to continue to stir it because you don't want it to burn. Smoke alarms go off when you yeah. see your yeah. film, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm going to put this back into our mixing bowl here. We have about three minutes, Morgan, just so you know. Okay, all right. I'll move it along. 
Just kidding. Producer told me it was two. So if you thought you had it, now you have to do it double time. All right. No problem. <laughs> So that's an industrial right. mixer right there. Yeah, so this is a big, big one. Yeah. So basically, you paddle this for a little bit. There's some steam coming off it. Already, I'm like in disbelief because I feel like we stirred this so much. Now you're going to put it in the mixer. It feels yep. like I'd be overworking the dough. Oh, no, you're not. Okay. So by using, you need that strong gluten structure in order for the dough to really rise mm. and keep its structure. And then what we're going to do is add some eggs. So I'm adding one at a time here, letting it come together. Now, even though that was hot, you're not cooking the eggs when right. they go in there? No. Is so, the heat from the uh, So the dough, as I, as I paddled it, yeah. it started to cool down. And uh -huh. so it's not hot enough to scramble the egg. Um, but you do want to let it go and let it paddle along there. Whip it up a little bit. Wow. You want it to come together. I'm so, I'm like treading in unknown territory. I feel like this would be so... All right, so now we've got a nice cohesive dough. So it's kind of thickened up and it looks more like a batter now. It looks maybe a bit more yeah. like a cake batter. All right. So it went from mashed potatoes to batter in a exactly, hurry. There, exactly, exactly. And the egg in. Yes. And it got some yellow color. To yes, it as yes. Well. And so now, in order to form your, your shape of your eclair, what, we're going to use a piping bag. Um, and this is a plastic one, it's a disposable one. Put it in here. You make this look so easy. Of course, you're, say, you're classically you trained. She, she knows how to do these things. Yeah, there's a, there's a little, it, it takes some practice to get used to using a piping bag. But once you get it, they're, they're really easy to use. Um, and they're good to have in your kitchen. So this has just a plain tip on it. Mm -hmm. And you just want to pipe out your eclair shape. So basically just a, a little log there. Um, and these obviously expand a lot in the oven. You can make them a little so bigger you if you want to. In between. Yes, yeah. And if I wanted to make like a cream puff like we have here, or these are little cheesy gougeres, you can make a little round dollop. You know, people have called me a cheesy gougere every <laughs> once in a while. And you still invite them over for dinner. <laughs> hey! And so we would egg wash these and bake them. And then once they come out, they look like this, beautifully golden brown, and these were piped with a with a star tip more similar to this, and, which is why oh, it has the lines. Oh, which is how they get the lines. Mm -hmm. Producer gave us a wrap, but I think you can go ahead and squirt it all in right, there super right. fast, right. Tori. So I saw you happen. punch holes in that with your finger on the bottom yeah, so you before wanna, we started. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a guide hole, and I'm just filling this with vanilla pastry cream. Oh, so you don't have to like do it at one end nope. and then make sure it goes nope. all the way to the... Nope. Look Those, at that. Yep, you just fill it sort of like a Twinkie. And then it's done. And then dip it in some chocolate ganache and add some, some garlic some white chocolate curls and you're all set. Great job. Thank you so much. How interesting. I've never seen that done.